Yo, what's cracking, folks? Welcome to episode number 29 of The Painter and the Pixie. Wow. Sorry, <laughs> I totally interrupted you. 29, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. Uh, I'm your host, Jeremy Vassar, and I'm joined, as always, by your other lovely host, Serena Vassar. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and uh, so in this episode of the podcast, Serena and I are just kind of recapping some of Serena's last couple weekends, mm-hmm. um, our experience uh, with that as a, a married couple. Yeah. And uh, just kind of talking about the little things. Yeah, little to, things. They're pretty good. How they matter, and it's uh, actually pretty important to get them right. It is. They, you so. know, the little things add up over time. Yep. You got a lot of a lot of good little things. Things are good. Yeah. You got a lot of bad little things. <laughs> not, not so good. Not as good. No, it's good. Not as ideal. So, all right, guys. Well, without further ado, please enjoy episode number twenty-nine of the Painter and the Pixie. This is only the beginning. All right. Ready? Ready. What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. Well, I don't believe it. Let's find out. Ready, set, go. Yo, what's up, girl? Hi, Jeremy. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good, good. I think we should cheers. We're yeah, having, let's cheers. We're having podcast beers on this one. <laughs> cheers, love. Welcome home, by the way. Thank you. Nice welcome it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we are chatting about the the little things, the small yeah. things, getting the little things right. So And like little things matter. Yes, they do. Quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So you're you're having one of your favorite beers. I am new favorite. I like I've liked beer and other things, but it's like I never had a favorite. Where I'm like, uh-huh. if I have choices, I'll pick this one over the others every time. Right. This one is pretty much favorite. <laughs> it's, I forget, Dewclaw. It's uh, Sweet Baby Jesus. It's a, the name is Sweet Baby Jesus. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a peanut butter porter. Chocolate peanut butter Chocolate. porter. And it's delicious. Yep, it's yep, so yep. good. Nice and dark, just like my soul. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I always get you uh, the things you like. It's yeah. important to know what you're you know, significant other or people that are close to you, what their favorites are. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to like get it for them on a relatively frequent basis. It was so nice. It was so nice of you. I'm rocking the uh, Mosaic. Yeah, Mosaic. It's a single hopped uh, ale from, Mm -hmm. I think it's from Founders. Very nice. So it's pretty delicious. And a gentleman explained to me who was in line at the beer distributor that Mosaic is a type of hop. Oh, that's pretty cool. He makes his own beer. And uh, he said he uses mosaic wow. uh, as, as like one of the hops that he uses. And apparently there's like a, a lot of different types of hops. Mm. And just in lieu of the small things, I thought it was weird that he made beer, but the beer he was buying was Bud Light. I was like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is a little <laughs> bit weird. So, huh. and for those uh, watching on YouTube, I'm going to be sweaty and red because I just got <laughs> yeah. out of the sauna and took a shower. So, yeah. Uh, takes a little while to cool 30, down on that. 30 minutes at 210, my core temperature is still pretty high. Yeah. So, but yep. it's all good. Just you gotta, mean you didn't just like jump in an ice bath afterwards to I cool would, yourself down? I would. Um, but really? they don't they don't have those available. Huh. And then like the uh, showers there kind of skeeve me out. Yeah. So come home and shower. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Just a little like no. So mm-hmm. flip flops all the time on that yep, floor. Absolutely. And uh yeah, I just kinda I'm used to driving home sweaty anyway. So it's all <laughs> good. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to chat about kind of your last two weekends, really. Yeah. I've been gone for a lot of the last two weeks. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, you know, I know you had some things you wanted to share about that, but we're talking about some of the small things and how, uh, you know, like getting your, your spouse's favorite beer and having Mm -hmm. that ready to go. And uh, I think that's important. Um, (laughs) but but kind of how that translates. We've been talking a lot about relational integrity mm-hmm. and uh, some things like that where I think it's nice to just have a nice conversation yeah. where we can kind of uh, demonstrate how we actually use yeah, this like on a real a, life example. Yeah, like a practical example. Like not we're not just like making stuff up mm-hmm. and like we actually secretly like hate each other. This is all an act. No, um, it's not. It's not. No. no, I like you a lot. <laughs> I was thinking about that this morning when you left for work. I was like... I just want to keep talking to you and drinking coffee with you and hanging out with you and just like, let me just touch your nose one last time with my finger. <laughs> <laughs> you are, uh, 
yeah, it was very nice text. It's very nice to get that. Yeah. Like, uh, so you send me stuff yeah. like that all the time. Well, it was just like, I, for those of you guys who may not know what text he's talking about, I, I texted Jeremy and I was like, I'm so happy that I am wanting to spend more time with you. You know, it's not like, oh, thank God, Jeremy has left. I can get my stuff done. And like, you know, it's like, right, I right. wish I had an extra hour where we could just sit and talk and drink coffee together. It's a good problem to have. It's a good problem. And yeah. I was just, it's such a lovely feeling. It's so nice. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, I would definitely would rather have stayed around and talked to you mm-hmm. than had to go work. do what I did. Yeah, <laughs> this is work just gets in the way. Um, <laughs> and we normally get to talk and hang out on the weekends, but I've been gone the last two weekends. Right, right. With NTA. Yeah, and I've just been nutritional uh, therapy association. Yeah, <laughs> NTA. <laughs> For those who may not Hollow. know. Um, but yeah, and I was just whiling away on my computers. Yeah, uh, it's the true. whole weekend. So, um, yeah, it's very very nice mm-hmm. to sit down and actually chat with you and have mm-hmm. a beer and. Uh, I was talking, I had brunch with Diane yesterday and I was just saying like, yeah, one of my favorite things is just to have a beer with you and talk. And that's like a super, Mm -hmm. super nice thing. It's It's one of our favorites. It's, it is definitely a favorite. So, and then when you actually have super good beer, yeah, it's also nice. It's also a favorite. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, yeah, it was so, it was really great. I mean, like I said, I've been traveling a whole lot and you're in hotels and you're with a ton of people. I mean, our class in Herndon is like 22 students, maybe five group leaders, two instructors. So we've got a decent amount of people. And then our Philadelphia class here, first Philadelphia class, by the way, I have been saying for the NTA to have a Philadelphia class for like four years. And I'm so honored to be part of the first class. Yes. And then, uh, so how'd it go? It went great, but I was saying that um, that has 32 students plus all the group leaders. So it's a lot of people to be around. (laughs) So the little things really make a big difference. And I had a a really nice conversation with one of our students in Philadelphia class that was just, I was thinking about it a lot. I kind of just said it. I think about these things and sometimes I have lines that I say to, to people a lot. And it's not that they're automatic, but it's just that I, I don't think about them hard when I say them. Okay. I just know they're really true things or they matter or they mean a lot and I'm not like breaking it down. And I, we had a conversation, this one student and myself, about how the little things matter a whole lot. There is no such thing as a big thing. It's just like a long string of little things. Yeah. I and I that. and I loved it. I mean, I was just thinking about so many little things and it was near the end of the workshop and how you have been such an awesome support. This is the first time that I have commuted to venues yeah. where, where we're teaching. Um, normally I just stay at the hotel and it was like, I would go out and be home really late and you always had food ready for me or you would leave, you know, leave the light on or it was just so many little things that made it so much easier for me to get up and get going and come home and do all that I had to do to be ready for this class. It was great. Yeah, man. Keep the transition smooth. Yeah. So, and then I always try and have something nice for you on mm-hmm. your list. You see, usually you're away for a couple of days and then you like, you're not coming home in between right. and then you come home. So, you know, usually I've got some stuff set mm-hmm. out for you when you, cause I've, I've figured out that, uh, you won't eat if I don't have food. Like yeah, if I'm like, w- <laughs> what do you want? Cause a lot of times you get home later. It's yeah. like nine or 10 o'clock sometimes. sometimes but 11. if I have food, you will go to town. Mm-hmm. So that's what True, I, that is what happens. <laughs> yeah, and I try and give you some, uh, you know, some, uh, a target rich environment mm-hmm. when you come home. Mm-hmm. But yeah. so, you know, you kind of talked a little bit about it from your side of things, like how busy it is. And then like, from my perspective, you always want, um, Home was always a really, this is kind of the practical Mm -hmm. side of things from from my end of things where home for me was always a really safe place. Mm -hmm. It was always a really, it was an oasis amongst the chaos of the world. And my dad and my mom were very intentional about um, making the home like a safe place that you always wanted to come back Mm -hmm. home. So it was uh, just because we were like, it was super chill. It was super peaceful and, uh, you know, just not always a very restorative place. Yeah. So you didn't really feel stressed coming home. Right. It was all, you're looking forward to reentry. Now Mm -hmm. when you do set your house up like that, which we have, Sometimes it can be difficult to get like work done. Yeah, because um, you're just in relaxation <laughs> mode all the time. Because you're like, sweet, I'm home, I'm not doing it. So 
on on my end of things i always i know what it's like to be out and about and doing Mm -hmm. things and coming home and it's really nice to like little things for instance the kitchen being clean yeah makes a huge difference and just that initial feeling when you come home of Mm -hmm. like oh and then if you see you know some of your favorites set on the table Mm -hmm. i usually try to do flowers and a beer ready to go and things like that that are it really doesn't take that much effort Mm -hmm. truly it doesn't i mean it's but it's just makes me so happy (laughs) exactly so it's like a small thing that i can do um that takes you know very minimal effort on my i will say that i'm a pretty like baller at arranging flowers you are you're actually pretty good at it yeah you do a really great you do better than i do i did a lot of it when i was dating you because i was so mad at when i paid 90 dollars for a bouquet from like yeah that was for my birthday the first birthday that we had together we started dating in October, my birthday's November. <laughs> well, I paid 90 bucks for that yeah. thing. I was expecting an overwhelming bouquet of flowers right. like you see in the movies. It was like three flowers. Like, what the hell? <laughs> it was more than three flowers. It was just like they had fancy sticks coming out of it. Was it was garbage. Like twirly sticks. I was, I was disappointed. Yeah. But apparently... You, I was not. You ladies were impressed, but... But yeah. then I figured out, like, I go to Trader Joe's and spend, like, 40 bucks and get a shit ton of flowers yeah. and just do it myself. And then... Yeah, or even, like, less than that. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, I just figured you could do it on the cheap. Mm-hmm. So, there you go, fellas. It's a little little tip for you. Yeah. Try and get some, <laughs> try and get some height differential amongst your your choices, mm-hmm. then just kind of group them all together. Yep. It's not super hard. Not super hard. You're pretty good at it. Yeah. And it's always so nice because I have really long days when I travel. Super super. That's why you said if I. I am so exhausted. I'm not going to really, if I don't have food ready, I'm not going to eat food. I'm just going to go to bed. Yep. I don't care. I'm like, whatever. Water. Bed. But maybe beer. <laughs> I've noticed you generally enjoy like having some wind down time. Mm-hmm. And if you can, you know, shove some tasty treats in your face, it's like a nice way to kind of transition mm-hmm. into the yeah. realm of sleep. So, yeah, it is nice because like the last weekend, the weekend before this past weekend, actually, when we were in Herndon, that's a midterm workshop weekend. And that means that we are in class for four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And that's like uh, for me, I have to arrive early before students. So I'm there early and I always am extra early because when you have a dog, service dog, <laughs> you have to a lot for time where people will stop and ask you questions Yeah. or whatever. You just have to give yourself even extra time. So if, if the rest of the group leaders show up half an hour early, I have to be there 45 minutes early at least because I have to make sure I have time to deal with all the incidentals. And I usually bring things like the Berkey water filter and try to make it a really nice environment for the students so anyway we're, we're in class all day long from like eight in the morning till five o'clock or six o'clock at night and you know we stay late and we do we're grading and doing all these things and traveling and and it's nice sometimes i travel and i have a hotel room to myself and then you just peace and quiet wind down do whatever you want but i also like to share rooms with people too especially it's a long workshop weekend sometimes you're like i don't want to be in this hotel room by myself so this i shared with a wonderful co-group leader of mine and she we had a great time but in some ways it's still exhausting because you're still on you know you're still right, talking right. to people and being engaged you can't just like i'm gonna lay on my bed and play on pinterest all <laughs> for an hour <laughs> Yeah, um, so it's yeah. really nice. And then I come home and I, it's a pretty long drive from Herndon to here, but not that long. It's like three hours if yeah. there's no traffic, yeah. but I've, it's taken me as long as six hours to get home with traffic. Yeah. That DC traffic getting out of there can be a mofo. It can be the weekend before the first workshop weekend in Herndon this year was terrible. Terrible. That one was one that took me more like six hours to get home. Yeah. Thankfully this last weekend. Um, it was three hours, almost exactly three hours on the nose. I was so happy. And I came in through the door and you had flowers waiting and you had food. You made like little mini like adult Lunchables. It was like <laughs> crackers <laughs> with sauce and good or raw cheese and okay, so slices of really awesome sausage. And you roasted it under the, the thing, the broiler. Broiled it, yeah. Oh, so good. Here's the problem with those. I was going for making like mini pizzas. Yeah. So I got like mini flatbreads. Mm-hmm. I got flatbread from um, Whole Foods and oh, then I okay. made them into, you know, little mini pizzas. The problem was mm. that I put the marinara sauce on the cracker and I shouldn't have done that because it made them soggy. Right. They were still delicious, still delicious, but the texture was not what I was going for. So if I had done that again, I would have just done crackers, 
like meat with the onions, cheese, broiled it, oh, and then yes. and then just like you could dip it in the sauce and yeah, then it would be crunchy. Idea. That would be the move. You might have to put the sausage on top of the cheese so you've got a barrier of cheese yeah. so the sausage doesn't make the cracker soggy. I feel like there wouldn't be enough moisture in the sausage because it was already cooked. Oh. Hey, that's a good point. We but can try that another time. I'm just saying, because that, that's what if I, idea. if I was going to do it again. Because the cheese, I just wouldn't want to broil the sausage again because I, I want the cheese on top because that's what I like to get crispy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I mean, melty. It's like a protective layer yeah, you're right. over the sausage and onion. Now I want to eat it. <laughs> <That's so good. laughs> Sounds delicious. I would eat <laughs> it right now. The sauce. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and that actually happened. My mom's, her, her like... Her go-to jam for mm. Christmas, uh, like when everyone used to come over here, we mm. had like 26 people here, she'd make strombolis. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she learned, uh, like she used to put the sauce in the stromboli mm. and then cook it, and a lot of times it would get soggy on the bottom. So then what she started doing is not doing any sauce, just the meat and the cheese in it. That makes sense. And then sense. you would dip the strombolis in the sauce, and then that was, that was the move. That's the move. The move. <laughs> yeah, it was delicious. So. Yeah. Anyway. So that, yeah, that's, it was just so many little things and it was such a wonderful, you always, always make it such a wonderful environment to come home to because I'm typically exhausted <laughs> from working and being on and driving so much and it's a, it's a lot of work. I really thoroughly enjoy it and I, I love going down to these workshops, but, um, it's, a lot of work. So then I was home. So I was gone Wednesday, Thursday. I worked all day Monday, all day Tuesday, a little bit in the morning Wednesday, left Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, was home, worked all day Monday, worked all day Tuesday. And for me, normally I work 1 to 8.30 p.m. And I was doing like 12-hour days. I was going at 9 in the morning and being done at 8.30 p.m. So I guess 11 and a half hour days. Yeah. But <laughs> long days to squeeze people into my schedule since I was gone for most of the week. And then I was gone again. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today's Monday. So like here we are back in the world. <laughs> and, and it was just so nice to come home to to you and all this wonderful little flowers and things. And it was nice coming home between workshops like each day. That was a different experience. I did a little bit grumble at having to wake up so early, but you were also <laughs> such a champ. I mean, I was trying to be quiet and not make noise or turn on lights. And you just would turn on the light and get up and make coffee for me, even though it was like an hour or two before you would normally have to get up so I could get out of here and get beat the city traffic and get down to Philly. Yep. yep. Oh, so kind. <laughs> so wonderful. Uh, sometimes I think it's funny that you think I'm like super kind and it's usually just cause I'm not shitty. It's not but like, that's a kind it's, thing to do. it's not, it's not like, uh, to me in my head, it's not like me trying to be kind. It's just not being an asshole. Like, well, that's, I mean, you, you could I mean? have just kept sleeping. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's still, that's not being an asshole. That's not being shitty. That's like, you're uh, just going to say, Serena, I'll let you do your thing. You can keep yeah. sleeping. It's not usually super good sleep though. So yeah. if I can help you out. Uh, then I'm, um, it was great. You know, I had plenty of stuff to do too. So, but I was like, yeah, I, I want you to have a smooth tran. The transition periods, mm -hmm. I think that's where the little things really come into mm. play. Like, um, when we're like on top of our shit, mm -hmm. like we clean the kitchen every night, we re we like load the Berkey filter because mm. I drink a lot of water. Yeah, I drink a lot of water too. So, and I fill two forty eight ounce Nalgene's every day before I go to work. Mm -hmm. If I do that for myself before I leave, I'm super pumped. Mm -hmm. And then like, if we're really on top of it, we'll like fill up the kettle for the um, hot the water morning. and then like pre-grind the coffee, mm -hmm. slightly sacrilege for those coffee snobs <laughs> out there. You kind of want to... But know, it keeps us going. It's you you want to grind it as close to brewing as possible, but it's like, it's okay. Yeah. It's still super good. You can good. sit for six hours while we sleep, <laughs> yeah. eight hours yeah. when I sleep. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but yeah, no, I just, it's, it, the, it's the little things that you do consider because a lot of the, you know, even something I think about is, is like how we greet one another. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you mentioned something to me earlier today where like, you're like, oh, I'm a little, <laughs> a little jealous <laughs> when you like pet Gus before you greet me. And I totally know that, but he also runs and jumps on me like right uh, when yeah, I get home. That, yeah. So plus, he's a dog and he's super cute and cuddly. He's, and I know he's that cartoonishly you're cute. After. He's cartoonishly cute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that's, he, he's he's almost an unreasonable amount of cute. He literally looks yeah. like a, a live stuffed animal. Yeah. Teddy bear or something. Yeah, he's just like some sort of Muppet. Um, yeah. But uh, 
but I think about it and it's something that I want to get better at is, is being like, you know, you greet each other a lot. You're Mm -hmm. always going to have that come home moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like how you greet one another, I think that's really important. So if you're, um, it's something that I think about, I'm like, I really want to get, because I know how much it means to you Mm -hmm. as well that like, you know, if I just went over and gave you a hug and a kiss, it Mm -hmm. means a lot. Even if you're on the phone trying to like sneak one in, because we're always on like our AirPods or talking to somebody. Um, Cause we're super important, y'all. No, um, just busy. <laughs> <laughs> Squeezing stuff in. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, like those are a lot of life is those little moments. Mm-hmm. Getting up, you know, going to bed, you know, greeting each making other. Making the coffee. Coming home, <laughs> making the coffee, all those little. So the smoother things are. And even that's like, um, you know, talking about little things things we've gotten better at is mm-hmm. like keeping things clean yeah. and like organized. That makes everything go so much mm-hmm. smoother. Um, it really does. Yeah. And like having a loaded beer fridge. <laughs> super nice. <laughs> yeah. The little things. Yeah. Little things are the big things. That's what I, that's what I learned over the last two weeks. That's kind of like a big theme. I often come back from these workshop weekends with like a thing that I have assimilated into my brain that was new or I was pondering while I was away. And the big one that I came away with from this past workshop weekend here in Philly was the little things are the big things. And, and they really matter because it positive and negative little things can go wrong. And I have a story about that. If you want we can share that story. Uh, sure. I don't know if that matters or not. You know, the car one. Oh yeah. Well, I mean that, that could have not been a little thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You said like, there's no big things. There are some big things. Like There are, but that's yeah. a culmination of a lot of little things. Yeah, yeah. You know, some little thing goes wrong and then big things happen. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the- so um, a lot of good little things happened this week. And then I went out to dinner with some of the gang, the NTA people, which is awesome. And I to set up the story nicely i got there early this was a really early day for me i normally don't i mean i'm fine in the morning but i don't have to drive anywhere or do anything complicated in the mornings i can but i'm not that good at it so (laughs) i pull into the parking lot in the middle of philly and hand the attendant my money because you have to pay for parking and i get out of the car and i go to the workshop right and then we go to dinner and then we go back to the car and um turns out I had a little blonde moment right about then and or way earlier at seven o'clock in the morning. I parked my car. Now I'm walking back to my car at like nine at nine thirty at night. Mm-hmm. Turns out I left my window open from when I handed that attendant my money. Yep. And uh, it, had, it had rained <laughs> and it quite had a been bit. Pouring rain. I was walking back from the restaurant in the rain thinking, I am so looking forward to my dry, warm car. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. And then I was like, Oh no. <laughs> Slightly moist. Little mistake turned into a big mistake, mm-hmm. right? Like some, I just was going and happy and bopping along and I, I never have left my window down before. Like ever. I have no recollection of ever doing that before ever. Yeah, definitely uh, don't do that again. For I sure. know. Well, I was so happy there were no squirrels living in my car. My car was not stolen. Nothing was stolen out of my car. People probably were pitying me like, which stupid person left this window down in the pouring rain? I sit down on the car seat and it's just like a sponge of water. <laughs> like, I had this pitiful little dog towel that I folded up and sat on. <laughs> I was like, oh, just get home. So little thing, big thing. But you know what? You don't sweat it. It's okay. There's nothing yep. you can do about it. Don't berate yourself. Oh, how stupid, you know, because I could have done that. Like, how stupid was I to do yep. this? No, it was an accident. Happened. Everything's fine. No irreparable damage has been done. Whatever. And then I'm driving home and on the turnpike and it's pouring rain still. And it's on the turnpike, no one's going more than 40, maybe 45 miles an hour. And I'm just like, okay giving myself space in front of me, just paying attention to the road. And then all of a sudden I see a flash of lightning and I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. I really have to pay attention because I don't do well when there's thunder and lightning because it's just too hard to see. Right. And then I look in my rear view mirror and I realize, Oh my gosh, that's not lightning. This big truck behind me, a pickup truck is just spinning Uh in circles behind me, like inches (laughs) from my rear bumper. Ugh. 
And then, of course, my heart rate goes crazy, and I'm like, this, as, that, like, as one electric would. feeling of adrenaline powering through your body, and yeah, I'm just yeah. like, keep moving, don't lose control of the car, and it's just spinning, spinning, spinning behind me. And then it was, like, about to roll, like, sideways, hit the edge of the barrier, came back, turned sideways, and then no traffic was at all behind me. Everything stopped. Everything just, and it, it was so terrifying and unnerving because, like, the car, it didn't make any sound while it was spinning. Yeah, because it's so wet out. Yeah. yeah you yeah. don't hear any squealing tires or anything. The only warning I had was seeing that big flash of lightning, that light from the headlights whipping around. It was terrifying. So that was a small thing. Could have been a big thing. It was a very... Sp- <sighs> <laughs> I already just go to bed now, too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I don't really think that's a particularly small thing because it could have really wrecked your... Mm-hmm. whole situation but I get, terrible. I get what you're saying yeah, yeah. like small like the guy lost control of the car he hit he turned something wrong like little action well it's raining raining it's kind raining. of a small thing yeah and it just turned into this big thing for the and i i don't think anyone was really really seriously injured definitely injured but like didn't look like anybody would have died from the accident i didn't hear about it on the news so i feel like well in fairness you, we don't watch the news this is true <laughs> <laughs> but I did look because I saw it. Okay, fair I point. Did, I did right. look. I All wanted right. to okay. see if everyone okay. was okay. Because I tell you what, the most eerie thing was driving the rest of the way home on the turnpike with no headlights behind me at all. Yeah. I was the last one out. Before You're like, that. sweet, nice and safe. <laughs> yeah. Unless someone in front of me spun out. You're like Indiana Jones that like made it out right before the rock came behind him. Yeah, crazy. So, <laughs> so that's anyway. why it's nice to come home to a nice place. And it was so nice to come home to a nice place. And I was just like, hey, all right. Yeah, I just sat down. I was like, Jeremy, my car's really wet. And I'm <laughs> like, like, you might have to shop back that for me. I have to sit down. <laughs> yeah, I did go out and, uh, yeah, and yeah, towel it off a little bit. Yeah, it was very kind. So, so anyway, yeah, that's all right. that was a story. I forget why I was talking about that story. Just, just recapping mm-hmm. experiences and then mm-hmm. small things leading to, because I think we we've talked about momentum before, yeah. and I think, um, momentum goes both ways. So you can start taking control of things and start having little things start to go well. Like Jordan Peterson says, clean your room. Mm -hmm. And I'm always super jazzed when I like clean my room, fold my laundry (laughs) and (laughs) and just get off the bed and there's nothing. And like I had it for a few days and then I had to do more laundry and now it's back in baskets. I'm like, no, it was so good for like two days. Um, But, you know, it's it's that that kind of on ramping of of uh, really anything you're doing. It's mm-hmm. those little small steps that you take that compound and then can snowball into bigger and bigger mm-hmm. things like fitness yeah. or whatever. But it also goes the other mm-hmm. way. Those little decisions you make can spiral you down. Mm-hmm. Momentum can go in a, in a bad way. It can mm-hmm. start, you know, you make little decisions that start to, you know, things come unhinged and you, you make, you know, progressively worse decisions. Those little things you didn't get to start mm-hmm. to creep up and bite you. So it's like, you know, you, you ignore your bills, you like, you just little things you can mm-hmm. spiral down and mentally too. So it, things get more cluttered, you feel out of control, you start getting anxious, things like that. Yeah. Um, so in a, there's a, a quote that I really like, I th- I'm pretty sure it's a Buddhist quote, but it's, um, you know, you tend to the part of the garden that you can touch. And uh, hmm. it's really about, you know, affecting the things that you actually have control over kind of the serenity prayer like you know uh it's it's basically it's basically the same thing like grant me the the, what do you remember how that goes i I really need to print that out and put it somewhere it's good though i know the end of it is like and the the wisdom to know the wisdom to know the difference grant me the strength to do the things i can do the courage to do whatever blah 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 yeah something 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 (laughs) wise whereas yeah yeah um but it's really about you know like starting with cleaning your room like what can you affect and then that spreads out from there um and you it's it's the, the you know the it seems like the more responsibility you take for your world and what you affect, the better things go. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then things kind of work out exponentially from there. So I think that's kind of what we're, what we've been chatting yeah. about. And then, you know, our house, you know, where you live, you have a lot of control over mm-hmm. uh, as far as like what it's like on the inside and, 
you know, when you come home, how it feels. And, you know, even I was considering like how Gus is when he comes, because I know he's been mm-hmm. working a lot. He's mm-hmm. been around a bunch of people. So I've got like been working as long as I have. frozen peanut butter Kongs for him. So like, I know, you like even his... think of Gus. It's the <laughs> best. You're so sweet. But like, that was something that was, you know, a family legacy of mine was thinking of things like that. Mm-hmm. So when my dad would go to, you know, a business trip or... Uh, was gone for a little while or whatever, or if he like went to the store, a lot of times, not every time, not every time, he would like get something for me and my brother. Uh-huh. And it was like, oh, dad's coming home. And like, and then he'd have something for you, like a little, some candy or like whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh shit. I probably didn't <laughs> say shit because I was like four. Um, but, uh, you know. Lefe just said probably. <laughs> probably. I'm not going to rule it out. I was, I was per- a precocious youth. Um <laughs> But, uh, so like stuff like that. And then my mom, my mom's a champ at that. Like, so yeah. we would go on like family, uh, trips down to Hilton Head and whatever. And then there was a period where my dad's parents were, um, their health was failing mm. and I was really little. I was like four. So my brother was like six. Mm. We weren't at this house. We were at, uh, the old house and, uh, like we had to go down to Richmond, like yeah, every, every other weekend, every weekend or every other weekend. And so my mom always had like a little thing of candy for us or whatever. So we got just used to it. And then that progressed to, you know, we'd go down to Hilton Head and my mom had these little like goodie bags and she'd like dole them out to us like (laughs) during the trip, which was awesome. Um, But it's really funny. Like a good example of this. So if if I went to like Mm 7-Eleven to get, uh, say I wanted to get some candy for myself. I would when I this is when I live with my brother. Oh yeah. Um, I would always like get my brother his favorite candy. Yeah, that's like really without sweet. asking or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> my brother can go to Seven Eleven like I'm gonna get some candy. He won't get you shit. No, he like, doesn't know how he thinks about it. <laughs> just he locks in so hard on like the candy he wants. He just has no no concept that somebody would want something else. <laughs> it's, it's really well, funny. and it's just not on his radar to be. He's yeah. thinking about what am I doing for myself, and you're right. like, I want to make this environment great for everybody. Right. Right. And it's totally, my brother's a very kind individual. Yeah. He literally just doesn't. It's just not his radar. Doesn't think of mm-hmm. it. Doesn't think of it. Yep. But I always think of that. You do. And it makes me so happy. I so, feel so special and loved. Ooh, I got us <laughs> such a good gift picked out for you. I, you got to stop ooh. telling me this. See, it's not a sexy gift, but I th- I'm i like so positive you're going to like uh, it. So, uh, I want to know. So like in August, August 7th, August we'll have been 7th. married four years. Yeah, and... This is the first year since we've been married that I am not away teaching over our anniversary. Really? Yeah. First, I've yeah. been in Herndon or DC every year since we've been married. See, like, I get why people care, I guess, about the marriage, like the date of it. Um, but like ours wasn't a big deal. So I don't know. I have a different date in my head that's like, the thing that I care about. Well, like the date that you proposed to me. Eh, well, I mean, that was the night before my birthday. That's mm-hmm. the only reason I know that. But like the first time that we talked, mm. the tailgate of my truck, yeah, that kind of we set like, things in motion. This is yeah, a different yeah, yeah. thing. That's the one I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, like, I, I remember that too. Yeah. That was a good moment. But yeah, I, I get it because it's like a big event that people remember mm-hmm. and there's pictures and whatever. But Yeah. But it's still nice. I'm glad that I'll be here for this time around. Yeah. Yeah, and, and good that we're celebrating a, like, good marriage. Yeah, so. that's pretty cool. Not, like, locked in something that we You know, despise. I haven't forgot that you just told me about this, you know, right? Like, that what? you just told me you had this great gift picked out and you didn't give me any other hints. Yeah, well, it's sweet. You're going to like it. Can I have another hint? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not something shiny. Okay, fair. You, you typically do buy me jewelry. All my mm-hmm. best jewelry has come from you. Yeah. Um, well, you're like a raccoon. You like shiny things. I do. Yeah. I do. And I do like jewelry. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> well, I, I, I went pretty strong in the paint with jewelry. Yeah, like you did. Like early on. At, when we were dating, you would buy me one little new piece of jewelry every month on the anniversary of when we started dating. Yeah, I did do that. You did that for like six months and then the seventh month you gave me a car <laughs> and i don't think i got any jewelry that month <laughs> was it seven months seven months yeah i remember my dad was like uh i think he really likes you serena yeah, skip the, i felt like it was safe to skip the jewelry on that month well in my defense i was tired of paying for your uh your poobaroo that yeah, you were driving around it, the poobaroo. it was a subaru yeah yeah. That I did not take very good care of. Sorry, well, dude. <laughs> evidently, you didn't understand that it needed oil. So, yeah. I don't know. That, 
that vehicle was incredibly impressive that it kept working. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was, it was kind of funny. Like speaking of little things, like I came into your apartment and you were like, here's, you know, cause you always gave me something. This was month seven. I knew you were going to give me something <laughs> and you were like, I got you something. And I thought it was going to be jewelry because every other month it had been jewelry. So why would it be anything different? Yeah. Um, creatures of habit patterns, <laughs> pattern recognition. And you gave me a little easy pass. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And you said, and I was driving a lot at the time. I was working. I lived in Bristol, not Bristol. Um, what's the place? Bethlehem. No. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I lived at this place that was far <laughs> away, and I can't remember the name of it right now. I thought that was down in Dresher. No. That's where you were. I don't think I was in Dresher at, at the that time. Point. Was seven, I? seven months in, you were. Oh, okay. Well, then I wasn't there. Never mind. Uh-huh. So anyway, the point is I went on the turnpike a lot, particularly to visit my friend Megan. Yeah. And I just kept using cash and you gave me an easy pass. And I, th- I thought that was the sweetest, most kind thing that you could have ever done. And you're like, let's go put it in your car. And we walk out and you walk past my car and you walk across the street where you had parked my new car. Yeah. And you open the thing and you put the easy pass in and then I almost puked. I was well, like, I cannot <laughs> believe this. It was nuts. It was crazy. You're like, let's drive. And I'm like, I'm shaking so much. I totally can't drive the car. Yeah, I thought you'd be more excited. And then I, lo- I was like, oh, she might throw up right now. Yeah, I, don't know. I was just totally overwhelmed. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to do with this thing. I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this podcast has turned into like just the... Stories, I'm sorry. Examples of me being <laughs> awesome. So that's... Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's all the little things. I just have a lot of examples of where you've done a lot of little things that are then big things. And like, but that, those are the things that shape our lives. Those are the things that make stuff better, you know? Cause like yeah. the car is not a little thing. That is definitely nope. a very, very big thing <laughs> for sure. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's not such a big thing. Um, but, uh, or not such a, yeah, it's not that big. But and so for those that don't know, Easy Pass is just a little uh, electronic device that uh, you don't have to pay tolls. You pay them, but it's it's linked to your credit card, so you don't have to yes. like stop and get a ticket or anything. I feel like most people probably know what mm-hmm. Easy Pass is. Mm-hmm. But um, and the car that she got was I think I got you a 2013 Nissan Sentra. So Nissan Sentra, black. New at the time, whatever year it was. Yep, and that was the first time in my life, only time I've ever got pulled over for a ticket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was going down this little hill at like 50 miles an hour, and I didn't realize it because my Subaru would shake when I went over 40 or 35, (laughs) and it was only 35, and I was like, they pulled me over, and I was like, what's wrong? And they were like, "Uh, you're speeding, and I was like, completely, totally oblivious, had no idea. I was like, I guess I deserve this because I was definitely not paying attention. It almost falls apart every time I speed. I'm not used to that. Yeah. So. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's the, so like we'll backtrack just mm-hmm. here a little bit. Go for like it. Where, uh, um, so the, the thing that you will remember coming home from mm-hmm. some of these NTA weekends is like the flowers and the food when you mm-hmm. come home, right? Those are like really small kind of things that I do mm-hmm. consistently. Right. Mm-hmm. But like, that's something that will stick in your memory. Yeah. And it's interesting to think about most of our lives that we live are lived in memories that we will forget. Hmm. You're, you're, most of the time you're living in forgotten memories. You're tying your shoes, you're cleaning your house, you're driving to work, you're doing these things that are all impressionable things that are, you're not going to remember, um, which is an odd thing to think about. But like those even little small things that are thoughtful will resonate. And then if they're repeated, you know, like a good family tradition, mm-hmm. something like that. Those are things that you remember. And those are the moments that I think about because they matter. Yeah. They, they contextualize your relationship. They really affect things. Um, you know, like you, you know that I care. Mm-hmm. Like that's a, that's a way that I'm signaling to you that I've like thought this out. Yeah. Um, and then you're like, oh, Jeremy cares for me and, and loves me. And he's doing these things so that my, my life is better and easier or like whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So, um, And that's something that like, it doesn't, I guess my point is it doesn't have to be like a huge big deal. Like for example, the, the flowers I got, this is like a $7 bouquet from, but they're so beautiful, uh, from Whole Foods. And then I took the dead ones and I scattered the petals around it. That cost me no monies. 
and uh, you and know, it was such a beautiful presentation. So I was gonna have to throw them out anyway, yeah. and then you know, empty beer glass because I didn't know where you were coming home, mm-hmm. and then and then last and then a bowl with with a bag of potato <laughs> chips yeah. because those are my favorite. Yeah, gotta get the potato chips, man. Yeah, I don't eat them that often, but they're <laughs> like, it's so nice when you're just like I just want to relax and come home and drink a beer and eat some starchy carbs and then like <laughs> hang out for a minute yeah and back to the grind the next morning yeah yeah but i think it's the uh it's a beautiful gesture <laughs> if you can say that beautiful with like flower petals and mm-hmm. a beer glass and potato chips <laughs> but yeah man so i'm, I'm big on you know i it, it should be a place you want to come back to mm-hmm. and it's not it doesn't take very much to uh you know, pay attention and like know what you like. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that sometimes a lot of people, especially clients who I work with, you know, we've got some pretty big goals that they want to achieve a lot of times and it can feel really overwhelming. It can feel so completely like, how are we ever going to get here from point A to point B? But you just take little steps. You do what you can, right? If you've got a stack of papers that you have to file, file one at a time. Yeah. Do what you can do. Break it down into small enough chunks. Something that you could do that you would do and then do it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've listened to the most recent podcast with Joe Rogan and uh, Jordan Peterson. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But he was saying like, you know, like how do we go about kind of taking control of our lives and moving forward? Mm -hmm. And one of uh, Jordan Peterson's points was uh, you have to be humble enough to set the bar low enough oh yeah that was good that you'll actually clear it and keep moving forward so i think uh you know i've I've heard you say this a couple times where you have uh and i've seen this with fitness guys and whatever but like you have a client that's like i'm gonna get healthy and they're like i'm gonna throw away everything in my house and get super awesome and do Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's like they want to do everything at once and that's a common thing with like people that start doing jujitsu like i'm gonna go as yeah. hard as I can. And this is every day, four hours coming from someone that has done this numerous times. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I've, I've done this uh, a lot, just going like, yeah, everything now. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's not like sustainable change. Cause a lot of times like yeah, it's you, not. you white knuckle it, you're excited and that's great. Um, but really understanding like, well, what can I sustain? What's mm-hmm. actually going to help me, you know, you know, what am, can I clear that first hurdle? That, mm-hmm. that very small, fr- and be humble enough to know that I need to set that bar really low. Well, and low enough that you can clear it and you will clear it and you'll keep clearing it. Right. Right. That's what it is. We talked about that at the beginning of the show before I told a bunch of stories. Um, <laughs> that like, you <laughs> he's licking your toes. I see that. Um, Thank you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Little things like <laughs> licking your toes. Um, I forgot his name. Sorry. It's getting late for me. Um <laughs> It's not that late. You usually turn in a pumpkin around 11. Yeah, but I'm running on like workshop time still. So <laughs> anyway, the uh, little things that you do consistently, I remembered it, little things you do consistently over time is what matters more than anything else. Like you said, you can white knuckle and get through it. Just hold on and get through it for a month. You can do anything for a week, month, whatever. But it's not something that you have kind of assimilated into your narrative to be part of your normal life. That's that. Those are the changes. Those are the steps that matter. That's what I try to work with my clients. A lot of people come and they're like, okay, I'm ready for the juice cleanse. You know, yeah. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> and the thing that I try to explain to people over and over again is that like I, people come to me and they want to do a detox and they want to lose 10 pounds in a week or whatever. And I think that that's a great goal. That's fine to have that as a goal. Not that it's a super attainable goal, but that's not the best way to go about something like that. If you want to lose yeah. 10 pounds, I am not a fan of saying just drink water or juices for 10 days to lose 10 pounds because that's not sustainable. That's not something that carries you through over time. I want to say let's develop new habits. Let's sit down when we eat. <laughs> let's chew our food. Yeah. Let's make sure we're drinking water. I mean, it was awesome. One of the students, a student or a group leader, I can't remember, shared a story about one of the clients or practice clients that a student had where, I don't know if this was a group leader. So she has a client who lost like 90 pounds in one or two months just because she stopped drinking soda. Whoa. Or even a month. 
I think it was soda. Yeah. It might yeah. have been diet soda, but it okay. was soda. And like one little change, that's a small change. It's big because if you're used to drinking two liters of soda all the time, like, okay, that's hard. Um, but that's it. Like sustainable steps over time. That's what we're going for. And I think it's very um, kind of impressive too for you as the as the clinician and... Um, practitioner. Practitioner. No, clinician. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Um, like that you are setting the bar that low for them. Be like, no, that's not how that's like the, you know, if you were an athletic coach, Mm -hmm. that's the sign of a good coach too, that you're, you're putting attainable goals that are low enough that people can clear. So you get some, still a little bit challenging. Right. Right. And then as the momentum picks up, particularly when you start, Mm -hmm. because when you start, you're starting at zero a lot of the times in whatever Mm -hmm. new endeavor you're doing. So if you can just check one thing off your list and then that can, It starts to trying to build momentum. What you said. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it can, you can get that moving in a good direction Mm -hmm. in a wide manner of very small ways as you move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I love about my job. Honestly, is I I get to help break stuff down for people into tiny little bite-sized pieces that you still feel like you're making progress because sometimes people are like, okay, well that bar is so low that like, why am I paying you money to do this? Right. Right. You need to make it high enough that it's still going to be a little bit challenging, but not so challenging that you're like, I throw in the towel. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is a much more sustainable way to go about most things Mm -hmm. um, than to, it's super easy to crush people. Mm -hmm. It's super easy to be like, oh, you're just not good enough. You can't do this. You can, I've heard some crazy like health routines that people put people through. Because the thing is like, I could cut weight and drop 10 Mm -hmm. pounds in like a night Mm -hmm. if I just sat in a sauna and sweated out, but that's not like sustainable, particularly healthy healthy. (laughs) or whatever. Uh, But uh, you know, so, and I think also too, uh, this is something that bothers me in general. (laughs) Uh, So if you have something that you do every day, every day, Mm -hmm. like something you consume. So like, well, let's take coffee for example. Coffee is a good example. Um, I don't understand if you really enjoy coffee Mm -hmm. that like, why wouldn't you get the best possible coffee (laughs) within reason that you, that you could enjoy on a daily basis. So like we landed on French press, Mm -hmm. you know, we've done Chemex, we've done other versions of it, but like French press is like good enough that it's super high quality. We've got really good. Not good enough. (laughs) Yeah. We've got like backyard beans, which Mm -hmm. is super good. We, you know, we grind it either the night before the morning (laughs) of, so it's like a, a sustainable way. And it's, it hit the, you know, it crests over the tipping point for me of like, okay, this is the quality that I really enjoy. And then for me, like heavy cream or like the emulsified MCT oil or Mm -hmm. whatever that I'm going to put into it. It's like, dude, you have that every day, like make Mm -hmm. that as best as you can. So, yeah. And I think that's true of lots of things. Anything you do every day, like you said, it's like, if you're going to interact with your spouse every day, make it the best interactions you possibly can. If you're going to interact with your kids every day, make them the best interactions that you possibly can. Yeah. Like put in good effort and do the best that you can, but not, I think that I know we've kind of repeating this a little bit, but when we set the bar too high, it's not that you should not have a high bar as your goal. It's just that you're not going to get to that highest bar overnight. You've got to give yourself steps to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And if you know, like you, that there's some friction between you and your spouse or you and your kids or you and your roommate or whatever, what's the first bar, the first step you can take to help improve that? Right. Right. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, uh, Jordan Peterson, I think gives us the example he brought up in a podcast that I listened to a little bit ago, but he was, had a, uh, a patient that was having problems with his kid. Mm, he was yes. arguing with his kid for like 40 That's minutes every in his book, 12 rules. For yeah. Life. And then he does talk about it. I think in the Theo Vaughn podcast, Oh yeah, yeah. um, of like 40 minutes every night, he's arguing with his kid about going to bed and then mm-hmm. he just had this friction and then, you know, Jordan Peterson very patiently sat back and said, like, okay, that's 40 minutes every night, mm-hmm. seven nights a week, and then did the math. And it was something like months and months of this guy's... Two and a half months or something. Of this guy's life spent arguing with his child. Two and a half months of work weeks. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of yeah. time of just arguing with his kid. He's like, if you smooth that out, that's you're freeing mm-hmm. up 
like that's really impactful. Like mm-hmm. that's going to. Well, are you going to want to be around someone who's really mad at you for two and a half months right. of work weeks per every year? No, that's yeah. not going to foster a happy, healthy relationship. So, but that seems like a small thing to work mm, on. I see. And a lot of times those, those small things that happen every day um, have an exponential effect on your life. Mm-hmm. So I just think that's, that's kind of some of the, the takeaways that I, and, um, it's interesting cause I heard this concept from a lot of the same, it, it, from a lot of podcasts, but like different guests. So, mm. um, a good example is like Faraz Sahabi from, um, he was on Rogan as well. Yep. Faraz Sahabi for those who don't know, which is probably all of y'all that listen, yeah. um, is one of the best, um, MMA mixed martial arts coaches mm-hmm. on the planet. He has churned out super high level champions, George St. Pierre, who's like probably the goat greatest of all time um, <laughs> at 185 pounds in 170. He's just, he's a stud, absolute stud. But like Frost the Hobby is a wizard and yeah. he's like, I heard that podcast. He, his philosophy is that you, you train and then you don't get sore mm-hmm. because that way you can get more reps in and train more every day. So you don't run yourself into the ground. Yeah. I and he that. trains, yeah, he trains brilliant. so much. He trains like every day, constantly doing stuff and they never push to like crazy failure or run people into the ground. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a, a different training method than like most people do. Most people where you like, you want to feel sore, but he's like, you should be ready at like all times where you're like, mm. he's like, well, if I'm not sore the next day, that means I can train more. Right. I can get more reps in on the mat. I can get more technique work in. I can do And it's a lot more like body weight stuff. But the point is he's doing stuff every day, every day consistently consistently. and um, relating this back to like exercise or something. I've found more of like, as I've gotten a little older, it's nicer to like push my body a little bit less hard, but push it more frequently, more frequently. Mm. So that's kind of what I've been doing recently. Like. Uh, a lot of the stuff I do now is like body weight or mm-hmm. fairly light weights with bands and stuff. And then I jump in the sauna and, uh, you know, rolling jujitsu. I'm not trying to like go crazy every time, you know, you definitely throttle it up when you feel it, but mm-hmm. it's, I'm not just trying to like, you know, destroy the world every time I go out there. Well, so. you used to be like not happy if the workout wasn't hard enough, right? Is that kind of what you're talking about? Like if you didn't push it hard enough, you would not yeah. be very happy. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, which is basically you're trying to get high um, on the workout. Oh, from like your endorphins. The endorphins, yeah. Yep. Which is like, that's when I got really into like CrossFit and mm-hmm. stuff because you would just absolutely max your body out mm-hmm. and then you couldn't move. And then you're like, it feels mm-hmm. good. Um, which I still do that. I've just found yeah. better ways to do yep, it that are sustainable. Good. One of them, which is like cooking myself in a sauna for <laughs> 30 minutes after work. So after workout, so... Um, but yeah, it's the consistency over time really breeds results Mm -hmm. and that's the consistency piece is pretty clutch. And I think that's true of like everything. I mean, I even talk about that with food with my clients too. It's if you're consistently making good choices, it is completely acceptable to drink a beer with your spouse while you're doing a podcast. It's completely (laughs) acceptable to eat a piece of birthday cake when you're at your best friend's birthday party. Like if you're making consistently good choices, you're going to be adaptable enough. Your body's going to be capable of like handling those not as optimal choices. Yeah. I think that's a good point too, that you're, um, you know, I, it, it's it's funny because it, sometimes I get stopped by people that know you, <laughs> and then they find out like I'm your husband or mm-hmm. whatever, and then they're they they make some assumptions very rapidly <laughs> about like you know you're a Nazi when you come home about food and everything has to be like oh. vegetables and whatever, and uh, particularly people that don't know you like super That's good. Funny. Um, and I'm like, no, it's we have like we have fun like it's yeah, fun we enjoy like, we ourselves have and enjoy potato food. chips and beer and you know some yeah stuff. that's because we're real people in real life yeah the stuff's around i'm like have you had ice cream it's delicious yeah. like, that's, <laughs> right exactly so, yeah. it's not like you yeah. have to give up everything it's just make consistently good choices and the beautiful thing that i love about what i do is you know what this concept called bio-individuality because what's the perfect diet for you may be a whole heck of a lot more carbs than the perfect diet for me. Right. And that's okay. And there's times where you have to maybe do like a therapeutic diet yep. for a very specific reason. You might have to be super strict for a little while if you're dealing with a specific issue. Yep. But then, you know, when that time passes and your your body is in a healthy spot, it can take 
other things that are, mm-hmm. you know, maybe not be in that very strict diet. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, but you got anything else, sweetie? You want to no, about? I think we're pretty good. I think good? This, this was a fun episode. I hope you yeah. guys enjoyed all of our stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think this is, uh, episode 29. And if all goes as planned, Ooh, we have some Ooh, great coming down for buddy, you guys. Setting up the schedule. Yeah. Starting episode 30, hopefully fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. Um, our, uh, our next little mini series is yeah. going to be kicking off. But we had our first mini series on brain state regulation, which was two episodes. Yeah. Now we're going to do our next mini series, which is going to be amazing. And I am not going to spoil the surprise. Mm-hmm. Nope. But I'm hoping yeah. for at least five episodes yep. on this it's one. It's going to be pretty so awesome. Good stuff all around. Yeah. All right, sweetie. Well, thank you for the very pleasant conversation. Thank I'm very happy too. that you're home and, you know, you don't have any. You know, we got a little bit of time before you have to go leave again. You know, I didn't have any major damage to my car, and I didn't <laughs> die in a car crash on the way back. So that was all, all good things. All good things. And I think the next time we're leaving is Hilton Head, right? Hilton Head. Yeah, buddy. Second week of September. All right, all right. Yeah. So, all right, guys. We will see you in the outro. That is it for us, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed our little rambling conversation about the little things. I really had a good time chatting with you, Jeremy. This was a great, fun little episode. To Hopefully, it was really helpful for you guys listening at home. <laughs> just to kind of have a picture of how the little things add up. Yeah, at least entertaining. Yeah. At least entertaining. You yeah. know, had some fun stories. Yeah, drink a beer while you listen. Yeah, it's, that uh, might be fun. Yeah. Um, not if you're listening while you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, if you want show notes, you can find them on our website, thepainterandthepixie.com. You can follow us also on Instagram at thepainterandthepixie for some fun updates and things throughout the week. Yep. Yeah, I'm always putting out the uh, thumbnails for the show. Mm -hmm. So... If you haven't seen them, oh my I, gosh. I think they're pretty good. They're so, great. You should yeah. go look at our Instagram yeah. just to see the I, thumbnails. I, I spend a, a relatively decent amount of time do, working yeah. on them. So anyway. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for us. We mentioned it in the, mm-hmm. the the towards the end of the show that we are uh, very likely going to be starting the mini series yep. next week. And uh, tentatively titled When Shit Hits the Fan. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. How to handle personal crisis, which... Mm-hmm. Uh, We've gotten some feedback from y'all and we have listened. So we're having some guests on. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about some deeper issues. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll just roll that out as we go. Mm-hmm. And uh, it should be, I'm pretty excited. I'm I think super excited. It's its fun to get pumped to put something out mm-hmm. and put a little bit extra work into it. Um, and I really do think it's going to have a, a pretty positive impact mm-hmm. on the people that listen and hopefully get spread around and I think it's going to be great. So last little note I want to make for the little things Uh is little things that matter is your feedback. We super appreciate it. And I just have to say thank you to everyone (laughs) who has written some reviews for us on iTunes that matters so much. And like some people have sent us me really nice texts and I just want to say thank you. It it matters a lot. Yeah. And and thank you for me too, because I didn't know we had any reviews. (laughs) And then I went on there. I was like, whoa, all right. Five stars. Look at us doing all good and stuff. But yeah, and it was, I don't know. It's just, it's cool to to read that. It's nice to know that people are are listening and getting Mm -hmm. things out of the show. And uh, we are are doing our our very best or at least close to our very best most of the time yeah. so <laughs> um but uh yeah we're we're very grateful for you guys listening and watching and all of that so we're gonna keep on keeping on and um if you haven't figured out already we're super pumped about yeah. this thing we're doing um the next series so uh that should be good so hang tight yeah it's coming and again if you have any other feedback uh there's all kinds of ways to reach us you can dm us on instagram there's an email link there as well and um mm-hmm. i think there's a contact us on the website yeah. all that stuff okay. so if you want to reach out give us a holler we're mm-hmm. happy to chat so all right guys anything else sweetness no, good no, all right good. all right we're happy to have you home I'm so glad. and we're like all good in the hood until mm-hmm. vacation so yeah um so yeah in the meantime we'll see you guys next week but uh relax be kind to one another and have a good one bye Salute.